Chapter 32 Day of Recognition After Spitfire had taken off from the dragon field, Septimus had flown him away from the palace and out above the river. They had wheeled to the right just before the jagged crag of Raven's Rock, and were now flying above the moat. Septimus craned over Spitfire's wide, muscled neck and stared down at the castle below on his right-hand side. He gasped. It looked as though someone had dropped a large pool of ink onto the palace and wizard way. The dark, irregular shape was, even as he watched, moving outward, as yet more candles and torches were extinguished. Jenna was sitting in her usual navigator space, in the dip between the dragon's shoulders, just behind Septimus. "'It's so dark down there!' she shouted above the noise of Spitfire's wings. Septimus searched for a sign of Marcia's safety curtain. He thought that maybe, just possibly, he could see a faint purple glimmer deep within the blackness, but he could not be sure. The only thing he could be sure of was that the safety curtain had failed. At least, Septimus noted with relief, Marcia knew what was happening. The spreading blackness had halted at the wall surrounding the Wizard Tower courtyard, and from its boundaries he saw the living safe shield begin to grow upward into the night sky, encasing the entire tower in a cone of brilliant indigo and purple lights, the colors of which showed, to Septimus's knowledgeable eye, that Marcia was in residence. It was a magnificent sight, and made him feel proud to be part of the wizard tower, although once again unhappy to be outside the magic. They flew slowly along the moat, keeping the castle walls on their right. The dark domain was spreading fast, and he knew that nowhere in the castle would be safe for long. The one beacon of light, the wizard tower, and his home— was now close to him and Jenna. They had a simple choice, leave the castle and flee to safety, or find somewhere within the castle where they could hide out and keep the dark at bay. Jenna tapped him on the shoulder. Sep, what are you doing? We have to get to the palace. We have to get Mum out of there. They had now reached the other end of the moat. The one-way bridge was to their left, and in front of them, on the other side of the river, lights ablaze, was the ramshackle shape of the great full turbo tavern. Septimus contemplated landing there. The lights looked so welcoming, but he needed time to think. He wheeled Spitfire around in a tight turn and began to retrace their path. Septimus flew Spitfire slowly so that he could see how far, and how fast, the dark domain was spreading. They flew over the drawbridge, which was raised as it always was at night. The darkness had not yet reached there, although the Gringes' rather mean single candle in the upstairs window of the gatehouse did not make it easy to tell. But there were other signs that all was still well. Septimus could still see the thin covering of snow on the road reflecting the light from candles in houses set back from the gatehouse. He also saw, as he dipped down for a closer look, a rectangle of lamplight thrown onto the road from an open door at the back of the gatehouse. Septimus took Spitfire down low along the moat. He was relieved to see that the candles were still burning in the windows of the houses that backed onto the castle walls, as were the lamps in Janet Martin's boatyard and on the newly arrived late-night port barge, which was just docking. But further down, the manuscriptorium boathouse was dark, not merely unlit, but so dark as to be almost invisible. If Septimus had not known it was there, he would have thought it was an empty space, and yet, strangely, the houses on either side of it were still lit. What Septimus could not see was that the dark domain had followed Marin to the manuscriptorium, and had spread through the entire premises, which extended down to the moat. Marin intended to make the manuscriptorium his temporary headquarters until he got into the wizard tower, but being in charge was not as much fun as he had expected now that Jilly Jin was no longer there to intimidate. The empty old place felt rather creepy, especially with the seal on the hermetic chamber glowing eerily through the dark, behind which, unknown to Marin, Beetle was frantically searching for the suspension charm, which was now languishing in the garbage bin out in the yard along with the rest of the contents of the siege drawer. With the paired code feeling like it was stuck in his throat, Marin had gone upstairs to Jilly Jin's rooms to wash it down with her stash of biscuits and plan his next move. His mouth full of stale biscuit, Marin stared out of the window and caught a glimpse of Spitfire as he flew past. What was he doing up there? Marin cursed. Stupid things! They couldn't even do a simple job like getting rid of a pathetic dragon. Well, he'd show that dragon. He'd get it. Marin smiled at his dark reflection in the grubby window. Oh, he'd get it all right. One way or another, it wouldn't stand a chance. Not against what he'd got planned. This was, Marin told himself, going to be fun. Spitfire flew slowly on, past tiny attic windows containing flickering candles, until they came to Snake Slipway. 
Below them, to the left of the slipway, was Rupert Gringe's boathouse, still happily ablaze with a couple of buckets containing torches. The houses on either side of the slipway were also still untouched. Many of them seemed to have caught Marcellus's habit of burning forests of candles, and the whole slipway shone brightly. Septimus had made his decision. Alther must wait. He would use his dark disguise to rescue Sarah, and then he would stay and fight the spreading darkness. But he could not risk Jenna's safety. He wheeled Spitfire out across the moat, and over the forest borders in order to give the dragon's face a turn for a good run into Snake Slipway, where he planned to land. "'What are you doing?' yelled Jenna. "'Landing!' yelled Septimus. "'Here? Not here! Snake Slipway!' Jenna leaned forward and yelled in Septimus's ear. "'No, Sep! We have to get Mum!' Septimus turned to face Jenna. "'Not you, Jen. Too dangerous. I'll go.' "'No way! I'm coming, too!' Jenna shouted above the whooshing of air as the dragon's wings swept down. Spitfire was lining up for the tricky swoop down into Snake Slipway, but Septimus could not concentrate with Jenna yelling in his ear. He wheeled the dragon around once more. "'No, Jen!' Septimus yelled as Spitfire flew back across the moat toward the forest again. I'm taking you somewhere safe first. We don't know what's in the palace now. Mum's in there, you... you total dumb brain! Septimus was shocked. Jenna never used language like that, normally. He blamed the witch's cloak. He turned Spitfire around and lined him up once more for landing on Snake Slipway. Spitfire began his second attempt to land. Septimus Heap, you are not dumping me! Jenna yelled. But Jen... Spitfire, yelled his navigator. Go up! Spitfire, who obeyed his navigator's instructions in the absence of any from his pilot, began to go up, but not for long. Down, Spitfire, his pilot countermanded. Spitfire went down. His pilot was in charge. Up, yelled Jenna. Spitfire went up. Down, Septimus yelled. His dragon obeyed. Septimus had one last go at persuading Jenna. Jen, please, listen to me. The palace is dangerous. If something happens to you, that's it. No more queens in the castle. Ever. We can land here, and I'll take you to Marcellus's house. He's got a safe chamber. Or we can even go to Aunt Zelda's. You choose. But you have to be safe. Jenna fumed. How many times had she been sidelined just because she had to be safe? She leaned forward. All the better to yell at Septimus and tell him she didn't care about being queen. So there. And the queen rules dug into her. Angrily, she pulled the book out of her pocket, intending to hurl it into the moat below. But something stopped her. The little red book sat so naturally in her hand, and felt so much a part of her, that suddenly Jenna knew she could not throw it away. In fact, she could never throw it away. This fragile, worn little red book contained her history. Whatever she thought of it, whether she liked it or not, this was who she was, who her family was, and she knew, as she looked down onto the darkening castle below, that this was where she belonged. Nothing she did would ever change that. And so, sitting on a somewhat confused dragon, Jenna realized what the Day of Recognition actually meant. Somehow, without any official ceremony, procession, or traditional hoo-ha, it had happened. She understood who she was, and she accepted it. It was, she realized, recognition of something she had known for a while, but had preferred not to notice. It was a bit late in the day, she thought, as she heard the chimes of the draper's yard clock strike ten, but that was fine. Septimus took Jenna's sudden silence to mean that she had stopped speaking to him in disgust. Landing, he yelled. Okay, Jenna shouted back. Surprised, Septimus turned around. Really? he shouted. Jenna smiled. Yep, really. Septimus gave Jenna a huge grin of relief. He hated arguing with her. And once more Spitfire began his approach to Snake Slipway. The slipway was hemmed in on both sides by houses, some leaning in toward each other, and none wanting their windows smashed by a misplaced dragon's trail. It was not an easy landing, even for a dragon used to the narrow confines of the castle. With a loud snort of excitement, Spitfire liked a challenge. The dragon headed down. It was a perfect landing. Spitfire settled lightly in the center of the slipway, and folded his wings with an air of satisfaction and the creaking sound of old leather. His pilot and navigator slipped down from their places and stood on the sleet-shined slipway. Spitfire, said his pilot. Stay. Spitfire regarded his pilot quizzically. Why did his pilot want him to stay in this bad place? Had he done something wrong? His navigator came to his rescue. You can't tell Spitfire to stay, Sep. It's only for a few minutes, Jen. Then I'm going to get Mum. 
but Spitfire's navigator dug her heels in. No, Sep, supposing those things come back. You have to take this day off. It's not fair. Septimus sighed. Jenna was right. Okay, Spitfire, stay, replaced with stay safe. He patted the dragon's nose. Okay? Spitfire snorted. He thumped his tail and sent a plume of moat water up into the air. The dragon watched his pilot and navigator walk to a doorway a few yards up on the left, where the slipway leveled out. His pilot placed a key in the lock and turned it. Then they disappeared inside, and the door closed behind them. Spitfire watched the door, waiting for them to come out again, and while he watched, he stretched out his wings so that he was ready to take off quickly, just in case. He didn't like the slipway. It was narrow and full of hiding places on either side. Spitfire didn't like what was happening to the castle, either. He could smell the dark. He could feel it coming closer. And then, suddenly, he saw a movement in the shadows. His pilot, Stay Safe, kicked in, and so, as a group of things crept up on him in a pincer movement, knives at the ready, Spitfire raised his wings, and with one powerful downstroke, he was airborne. He looked down and saw the things on the slipway staring up at him. A moment later, there was a loud splat. A particularly large amount of dragon poop had scored a direct hit. Jenna didn't like Marcellus's house very much. There was something about the smell of it that reminded her of a time five hundred years ago. Do we have to come here? she asked uneasily. Marcellus has a safe chamber, said Septimus, where you can be, um, safe. He glanced around. The narrow hallway and the flight of stairs leading up to the next floor were ablaze with candles, as they always were, but a stillness hung in the air, and he knew the house was deserted. Septimus felt at a loss. He realized he was also hoping for Marcellus's company and advice. "'He's not here,' he said flatly. Jenna was puzzled. "'He must be. All these candles are lit.' "'He always does that,' said Septimus. "'I've told him that one day he'll come back to find his house burned down, but he doesn't listen.' I don't want to stay here on my own. I really don't, Jenna said anxiously. It's so creepy. Let's go, said Septimus. We'll sit it out on Spitfire and wait for him to come back. I'm not leaving the castle, said Jenna, a warning in her voice. Neither am I. We'll just kind of hover. We'll be safe on Spitfire. Septimus opened the door and stepped outside. Jenna heard a sharp intake of breath. What is it? she asked. Spitfire. He's gone, 